Hi there, Otto from DigitalOcean here, and today I want to talk to you about expanding your Factorio factory with friends. Multiplayer in Factorio allows you to team up with friends to grow, defend, and scale your factory to new heights. While you can host a multiplayer game on your local machine, your friends and collaborators will rely on that local machine running, and with everyone's busy lives, this may not be ideal. So today, I'm going to show you how you can host an ongoing Factorio multiplayer game on DigitalOcean that anyone can access whenever they want in 10 minutes or less. Let's get to it. DigitalOcean simplifies cloud computing so builders can spend more time creating software that changes the world. In our case today, that means deploying a Factorio headless server so that we can get help from other people in building the world's biggest factory. And the way that we're going to accomplish this is by deploying a DigitalOcean droplet to host our multiplayer Factorio game. To get started with this, we're first going to log in or sign up for a DigitalOcean account. Since I already have an account, I'll just hit the login button, which is going to take me to my DigitalOcean dashboard. And what we want to do is create a new droplet. So I'm going to hit the green Create button in the top right and select Droplets. This is going to take me to the wizard for deploying our droplet. And from here, we can decide what type of operating system, how many resources we want to grant the droplet, and so on and so forth. We'll keep Ubuntu as the operating system. And for our plan, we have various different options, ranging from a shared CPU to a dedicated CPU, and then further uh, general purpose CPU optimized and other options. And then you can also scale your server to fit your needs. For my purpose today, I'll just select a general purpose dedicated CPU and I'll pick the $63 per month plan, but you can host Factorio on the basic $7 per month plan as well. I just want to make it simpler. With our plan selected, the last thing we'll need to do is select our data center region. And since I'm located in Las Vegas, I'll pick the one closest to me, which will be San Francisco. And the last thing I'll need to do is set a password or an SSH key to be able to connect to this droplet once it's created. To keep it simple, we'll just use password and I'll add my password that I want to use. Uh, we're not going to enable backups or any of this stuff for now. And with this, we'll give our droplet a name, let's say Factorio, and hit the Create Droplet button and we'll be off to the races. In about a minute or so, our droplet will be created and deployed. And now you can already see the droplets being provisioned here. So let's click into it and wait for our machine to be deployed. Now that our droplet is deployed, we are ready to connect to it. So let's take a note of the IPv4 address where we can access our droplet from and connect to it using our local terminal. And here, since I'm on a Windows machine, I'll be using PowerShell, but once we connect to the virtual machine, it'll be connected to that Ubuntu operating system and we'll be able to execute our Linux commands. So let's SSH into it by saying SSH root at the IP address that we have. Yes, we'll connect and then we'll give it our password. There we go. But once we are connected, you will see that we are uh, root at the Factorio virtual machine. And for now, let's zoom in a little bit so it's easier to read. And I will increase the size of the terminal because we don't need the DO background anymore. Uh, if we list where, where we're at, we are at the root of the machine. So let's just go one level up. Uh, you can see this is a default uh, Ubuntu Linux virtual machine. And from here, the first thing that we're going to want to do is download a version of Factorio, a headless version that doesn't have any of the game's graphics assets. It just has the game logic. And to get the download link, we can go to the Factorio website to the download section. And you'll see here um, the little Linux penguin. And this is the, the link to get the latest headless version of Factorio. So let's make a copy of that. And we'll go back into our terminal. And let's clear this so it's easier to see. We'll say get, and we'll name the file locally as Factorio headless.gz, and we'll paste that link, uh, factorio get download 
64.61, which is the latest version, and we're getting the Linux 64 headless version. So we'll execute this command, and it's going to take just a couple seconds to download it. If we list the file system again, we'll see that we have Factorio headless downloaded and on our Ubuntu virtual machine or on our droplet. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go into our OPT file, which is where Factorio is going to run out of. So the next step we're going to need to do is unzip the headless version that we just downloaded and place it in this opt directory. And to do this, we're going to say sudo tar and xf factorio headless tar dot gc. So this is going to unzip the factorio headless version and place it in our opt folder. If we list the file system again, we'll now see that we have this factorio directory. And if we go into it, we can see we have um, the bin where we executed the app from, as well as a data folder, and all the other data needed to deploy our headless server. So I'm going to clear the console for now, and we'll be ready for the next step. The first thing we'll need to do in our factory directory here is create a saves folder. So I will make a new directory called saves. And this is where we're going to save our game state. So if I list again, we have our bin directory, our data directory, and now a saves directory where our game progress is going to be saved. The next thing we'll need to do is create a save uh, zip file, or we can upload one if we have a local version of the game, uh, like a local save file that we want to make available to multiplayer. But since we are just deploying a brand new server, let's actually create a new save file as well. And the way to do this is we're going to go into our bin directory x64 and call the factorio file. And what we're going to do is pass in the create command, which is going to create a new save file in the saves directory, and we'll call it digitalocean.zip. But you can name it whatever you want. Once this command completes, uh, we'll have a newly created saves file that's going to create a new instance of the game. And we can check to see if that file exists now by going, by going to the saves directory and listing that we have digitalocean.zip. So now we have a save file and we are good to go. So at this point, we can actually start the game and connect to it and play. And just to show you that this works, uh, I went up one direct or actually, where are we at? Yep. So, so we, we went back to the factory directory. Let's clear this and let's start our server. And the easiest way to do this is Go back into our x64 folder, run factorio, and pass in the start server command and give it that save file, DigitalOcean. And we'll see in just a couple of seconds that our server has started from creating game to in game. So, what this means is that our application has started on port 34197 and we are able to connect to it from our Factorio game now. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll make a copy of the IPv4 address again, which is where the game is being hosted and run. Let's go into our Factorio game, select multiplayer, connect to an address. We'll paste in the 146, 190, 36, 191, and our port is already here, 34197. And hitting this connect button will connect to our Factorio headless instance that's hosted on DigitalOcean. So let's see if this works. I'll hit connect. And it looks like we are good to go. We're running at 60 frames per second. And we are able to play the game. I am moving, collecting some stone. And our game is running. If we were to, say, leave this game, Let's get this big rock first. If we were to quit the game and view our terminal again, we can see that I joined the game, played the game a little bit, and then when I left the game, the 
the game automatically saved in that DigitalOcean.zip file so that when I continue or resume the game, I'm back where I started. I have items in my inventory that I already captured and I am good to go. So let's quit the game for now and go back into our terminal and make a couple more changes. So this, is, this was the easiest way to deploy a server. And in this instance, the server is running, but let's look at some other options on how we can deploy this Factorio headless server in a better way. So I'm gonna shut down the server for now. And uh, just by hitting uh, control C that closed it. And now I wouldn't be able to connect to the game if I try to continue. Uh, it's just gonna try to continue, but since the server isn't running, uh, eventually it's going to time out. So the next thing I wanted to, and we can see that notice, cannot establish connection with the server. And that's okay. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was actually creating a service in our uh, droplet that's going to manage running the Factorio game, uh, running the Factorio headless server. So let's clear the console again. And the first thing we're going to do here is actually navigate to the data directory. And we're going to uh, take a look at this uh, server settings.example.json file. And uh, so this is where we can make a lot of changes to how our server runs when it is actually deployed. So let's actually create um, a version of this without the example so that we can utilize it. So what I'm going to do is say copy server settings.example.json to server settings.json. So now we have uh, server settings.json file available. So we can make changes to this and, and decide uh, and, you know, make any changes to how our server is going to be run, which mods to enable, how many people can join if we want to password protect it, and so on and so forth. And then you typically wouldn't want to run the Factorio server as a root user. So let's also go ahead and add a user for our Factorio service. So we'll say user add and we'll call them Factorio. And we'll give this user ownership Factorio to the Factorio directory and all of the files in it. Factorio. So we're great there. And then the final thing we're gonna do is actually go ahead and create a service that we can turn on or turn off depending on if we want the server to be running or not. And to do this, I'm gonna say uh, sudo nano go into the system D folder system and we'll create a new Factorio service. So this file at the moment does not exist. So we're going to create it. And what this is going to look like is this. So I'm gonna copy and paste and explain it a little bit. <clears throat> so we have a description. It's our Factorio headless server. It's a simple service that uses that runs from the um, user uh, of Factorio. And then we're going to execute this command when the service starts. And the command is going to run our Factorio server, open up the DigitalOcean save file, and it's going to use the server settings that we just created uh, a couple seconds ago. And if we need to modify them, we can as well. So let's write this file and exit. And then from here, before we can start the server, we'll have to reload our you know, services, services daemon. So we'll say system CTL daemon reload. And then we can run system CTL start this Factorio service. Now to make sure that this service runs, we can also do systemctl status Factorio to make sure that everything is active and running. And as you can see, it is active, running, and good to go. And we should be able to now continue and rejoin our Factorio server. So I'm gonna hit continue. Our map is reloaded, our save file has loaded with all of our items that we had previously, and we are good to go to start building our factory. So we can, we can build, we can, we can do whatever we want. And the best part is 
Since our Factorio headless server is hosted on DigitalOcean, when I exit the game uh, and stop playing it, other people could still connect as long as they have the valid IP address and as long as in our server settings we allow public access or we give our friends the password to connect to the service, they can help us build our factory, they can continue to uh, expand, defend, and, and play Factorio from their local machines without us having to manage it or be the host. So. That's it for this video. In less than 10 minutes, we deployed a Factoria headless service on DigitalOcean droplets and showed how you can connect and host Factoria multiplayer games without actually being the host. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something today and we'll see you next time.